management of anomalous coronary arteries. Coronary artery anomalies occur in between 0.2 and 1.2% of the population. There are several forms of coronary artery anomalies. The subject of this talk is anomalous aortic origin of the coronary arteries from the aorta, or AAOCA. But there are other anomalies, such as anomalous pulmonary artery origin, uh, which includes uh, Al-Kappa and the bland garland white syndrome. There are also fistulae and aneurysms from the coronary arteries. As surgeons, we are principally interested in anomalous origin of the left coronary artery from the right coronary sinus and the right coronary artery from the left sinus. Left main coronary artery from the right sinus makes up about 21% of anomalous aortic origins. And there are four different courses that are possible with relation to the great vessels, and they are shown here. The right coronary artery arises from the left sinus in about 6 to 27%, depending on the series, of anomalous aortic origin. That artery can cross the aortic root anteriorly or between the aorta and the pulmonary artery. Anomalous origin of the circumflex from the right coronary artery or the right sinus uh, occurs in about 10 to 60 percent and in some series is the most common. Inverted coronary arteries are rare. Anomalous origin of the left coronary from the right sinus has long been recognized as a risk factor for sudden death. Sudden death can also occur when the right arises from the left sinus, but with much less frequency. The exact figures for the risk of sudden death are controversial, but there is agreement that the, the risk is higher with left coronary from the right sinus. A landmark paper in, on this subject uh, was by uh, Melvin uh, Chaitlin. He reported 51 cases of anomalous aortic origin among 475,000 uh, military uh, recruits. In that series, there were 33 patients who had left coronary from the anterior sinus. Nine of these 33 presented with sudden unexplained death. There were 18 patients with a right coronary artery from the left sinus and no cases of sudden cardiac death. When sudden death occurred, most often a slit-like orifice and an intramural course was noted. This important paper demonstrated a, a nearly consistent finding seen in subsequent papers. That is, a higher risk of sudden death with the left coronary from the right and a lower risk with the right coronary from the left. And that the intramural course was a very common feature in the patients who presented with sudden death. Another very important study was an autopsy study in young athletes. In this study, which appeared in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology in 2000, 27 athletes who died suddenly during exercise were studied. 24 of these patients had an anomalous left coronary from the right sinus and three anomalous right from the left sinus. There were 22 men and five women, the ages nine to 32. 10 had symptoms before the fatal event. Symptoms included chest pain, syncope, and palpitations. 12 had had normal stress testing before the event. All of the 10 symptomatic patients also had normal stress testing. And again, the pathology seen at autopsy was a slit-like orifice, partially or completely intramural in every single case. Barron's study in circulation of 2007 of sudden death in 1,400 athletes also showed that coronary artery anomalies made up about 20% of the cases of sudden death in athletes.
There are several suspected mechanisms of sudden death in aortic uh, origin of the coronary arteries, anomalous aortic origin. High pressure in the aorta can exert uh, compression on the intramural segment of the coronary artery, particularly during exercise. Similarly, when there is a slit-like orifice, that orifice may be closed by intraaortic pressure. In some patients, sharp angulation or kinking of the coronary artery at its takeoff makes it susceptible to changes in aortic pressure and diameter. Some still believe that the interarterial segment is squeezed between the aorta and the pulmonary artery, but whether this mechanism truly exists is unclear. For some, it is difficult to imagine that a low pressure pulmonary artery can actually compress the anomalous coronary and compromise its lumen. Finally, spasm of the anomalous coronary is thought to play a role in some patients. The distinction between interarterial and intramural is shown here. On the left, the anomalous left coronary artery arises from the right sinus anomalously, but it does not travel intramurally. It is unclear whether these patients are at higher risk for sudden death. On the right, the anomalous left coronary arises from the right sinus, but importantly travels within the wall and there is susceptible to compression of that intramural segment and coronary ischemia. The indications for surgery have been discussed for considerable time and there is still not a, a fixed consensus uh, on these, but most authors would agree with these two indications, that the simple presence of the left main arising from the right coronary sinus is probably in itself uh, an important risk factor for sudden death and that these patients should be given strong consideration for surgical repair. A more selected approach is used when the right coronary arises from the left sinus, but surgery usually recommended if the patients are symptomatic, if there are objective signs of ischemia, or a history of sudden death. Still with these indications, many patients fall into the gray zone. Sudden death is very unusual in the first 10 years of life, and it's also rare in the setting of anomalous coronary in very elderly patients. So the patients at the extreme ages may deserve special consideration and may be offered medical treatment. What to do if the anomalous coronary is found at the time of surgery is also controversial. And finally, it is difficult sometimes to know if the symptomatic patient is actually having symptoms from the anomalous coronary. There are many types of surgical repairs that have been described. The most common unroofs the intramural segment and creates a large neo-osteum. Years ago, simple coronary bypass uh, using either a saphenous vein graft or an internal mammary artery was recommended for the affected artery. Unfortunately, many of these bypass grafts will eventually occlude because the anomalous coronary is not obstructed under non-stressed times and the competitive flow leads to closure of the bypass. The ostium uh, and its coronary artery can be translocated uh, and reimplanted in the correct sinus, but this is difficult to achieve when the coronaries are small or if there's a long intramural segment. Some authors believe that the pulmonary artery compression is important and will translocate the main pulmonary artery to a more leftward and lateral position on the pulmonary arteries distally to relieve that compression. And finally, a different approach entails pericardial patching of the anomalous coronary artery 
alone or in combination with the translocation of the ostium or pulmonary artery to enlarge the aorta as is it begins to separate from the main aorta. These pictures demonstrate the unroofing procedure for an anomalous left coronary off the right sinus. The intramural segment is shown here with the stippled lines. The unroofed segment is cut with a knife and often some of the edge tissue here excised. Often tacking sutures are placed around this to prevent dissection of the aortic wall. An intramural left coronary from the left sinus is also shown here in a 13-year-old male with two episodes of angina and lightheadedness. When the intramural segment passes behind the commissure of the aortic valve, it is sometimes possible to simply create a second ostium in the correct sinus without unroofing the entire length of the intramural segment, and that is shown here. Reimplantation involves detaching the anomalous coronary and moving it to its correct sinus. This can be a difficult uh, operation when the coronary is small and delicate and the aorta is thick. Pascal Vohe's anatomic repair involves transecting the aorta and the pulmonary artery, making an incision down into the appropriate sinus and out onto the left main coronary artery and placing a pericardial patch along this. This is an anatomic repair in that the coronary is left attached to the aorta and this large patch uh, creates a very large ostium for the coronary artery. As mentioned before, pulmonary artery translocation can also relieve compression from the left main coronary artery. The right pulmonary artery can be left in its usual location or in some situations brought in front of the aorta, the so-called Lecompte maneuver. There are several results of surgical series in the literature. One of the earlier ones was from Duke University and written by Turner. 53 patients over a period of 14 years. The mean age was nearly 14 years and there were 40 anomalous right and 13 anomalous left patients. Symptoms were slightly more common in the anomalous right group. Intraoperatively, the lack of an intramural course was seen in seven cases. It seemed more common in the right coronary. Transesophageal and transthoracic echoes predicted the intra or extramural course in the majority of patients. With a follow up of just under three years, there were no deaths, but one patient developed significant aortic valve replacement and required replacement of the valve. The Stanford series reported in 2011 had 50 patients, many more anomalous right than anomalous left coronary patients. 52% had symptoms and 28% had associated congenital heart disease. In their series, there were also seven cases which lacked an intramural course. Unroofing was performed in 35, reimplantation in six, and pulmonary translocation in nine. There was no operative mortality. There have been no episodes of sudden cardiac death at a mean follow up of under six years.
The Congenital Heart Surgeon Society is also conducting a large cohort study of anomalous aortic origin of the coronary arteries. This will, important study will shed light on the management of all patients and will include patients not referred for surgery. This will be a very important study to follow. In conclusion, anomalous origin of the left or right coronary arteries, or so-called wrong sinus origin of a coronary artery, is a rare but serious lesion with potential for exercise-related sudden cardiac death in the young. Left main from the right coronary sinus is a higher risk lesion that should be repaired in nearly all patients. Right coronary from the left sinus is more common but less serious. Operation generally is reserved for symptoms, documented ischemia, or a history of sudden cardiac death. Coronary artery bypass alone is usually an inadequate operation. Surgical unroofing of the intramural segment is the most common operation. It is safe and effective for addressing symptoms and sudden cardiac death. Thank you.